Hi. <laughs> Woo, my eyes are bothering me. Sorry. Just thought I'd mess with you a little bit. Well, guys, the Regents exam, the one coming up, is right around the corner. Summer school is right around the corner, too. Who wants to go? Raise your hand. No, not me. I used to teach summer school. It's not a lot of fun. There's a lot of miserable adults teaching. Not all of them. Some of them. Many of them actually aren't really miserable. They kind of like being there. But there are a lot of miserable kids waking up in the morning going, Oh, my God. Why didn't I pass algebra in school? I can't believe I had to take this class in the summer. Because I didn't study. I didn't work hard. I was just so excited about the summer weather. I just wanted to go out and get a tan. Go to Sea Breeze. Go to the park. Hang out with my buddies at the lake. And I didn't study. And here I am. They're out there still having fun. And I'm in summer school trying to pass this test. Is that where you want to be? I don't think so. I think you're here because you're working hard. And if you're here to cheat, please go someplace else. I really appreciate it. I don't want the cheaters here. I don't, well, I don't want you to work hard and be successful and not be a successful cheat. So, if you haven't done the work, go do the work. If you have done the work, wow, let's start this party. Now, if you've already done the first part of this video, you realize that this test was not very difficult. Our kids did very, very well last year. And it moves rather quickly. So, let's get going. Let's get started. Let's go. Let's have fun. There's all the work from I've already done. We're going to start on present 15. All right. Oh, yeah, this one's not going to be fun. Well, I bet I can eliminate a bunch of choices. First of all, let's remind ourselves about the circle formula. That's something, something squared plus something, something squared equals the radius squared. Now, in here goes x and the center part of the x and the y and the center part of the y. Backwards. Reversed. I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. What is the equation of the circle passing through this point? and centered at 3, negative 4. So because it's 3, negative 4, we're going to drop in a negative 3 here. Opposite sign. Because it's negative 4, we're going to drop in a positive 4. But I got rid of two choices. Oh, 1, 2, gone. Wow, geez, that was kind of stupid. All right, so anyway, now comes the fun part. Now we got to think. Now, if you don't like this, you can always use a piece of graph paper. But... 3, negative 4 is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. And 6, 5, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think they just tried to be jerks on this problem. Is right here. And so that is the center of the radius. This is the center of the circle. This is the radius. So the circle goes something like this. That is one six circle. Something like that. So I need to find this distance right here. Now you can either use the distance formula, which nobody memorizes, or we can just do the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you remember correctly, somewhere at the end of this thing, they give you a piece of graph paper. So let's use this because I think this will be much more easier to look at. So let me get my drawing tools out a little bit better and let's put a nice thick red line there. So remember that this graph paper will always be at the end of your test and you can always use it for scrap graph paper. So our our point was 3, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 6, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I need to find this distance right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a right triangle with it. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this is 1, 2, 3, 3. 
So I know now what to do. It's 9 squared plus 3 squared equals, and this is the radius, equals the radius squared. Now remember, if you go back to that formula on page 5, remember, I want radius squared. So when I get radius squared, I'm done. So 9 squared is 81 plus 3 squared, which is 9, is equal to the radius squared. So the radius squared is, in fact, 90. And that's what I want, 90. So I now know that radius squared is equal to 90, and I am finished. Choice 4. All right, let's go on. Moving on. Ooh, they tried to throw us a difficult problem. Not too bad. Not too bad. Blah, 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 continues, blah, 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 1.25%, blah, 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 for 24 months. All right, so this is kind of tricky. You just got to be careful here. So it says T is the time in years. This percentage rate's a little bit tricky. So we got to really set up this equation properly because if we don't, we're going to be try. Oh, my God, all we got to do is even look at the right equation. All right. So first of all, it's y equals, we're going to start with an initial investment of 18,000. That's where this goes. E, now 1.25%. Remember, you got to divide by 100, but really what you're going to do is move the decimal place. Anytime it's less than uh, 10, it's 0 0.0 something. So my in interest rate is 0 0.01. Two, five, and then we're going to multiply by the number of years. Well, I have 24 months. That's two years. And so it is choice. Looks like choice three. Choice three. Could have eliminated these two because they didn't use, uh, obviously they didn't change the percentage, and they didn't eliminate choice four because it used months instead of years. So kind of a tricky question. Not bad. Just have to learn to read. I'm going to show you how to do this problem, and then I'm going to show you how you should do this problem on a test because it's multiple choice. So we're going to do 30 over x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3, plus 1 over 1 equals 5 over x minus 3. Now I'm going to show you how to do this problem originally, and then again I'm going to show you how to do this problem that the way you should actually be doing this problem. So we're going to multiply each one by the common denominator. Well, the common denominator is x plus 3, x minus 3. x plus 3, x minus 3. And x plus 3, x minus 3. And I'm going to eliminate all the common factors. So it goes and goes, and I'm left with 30. Well, this is just 1 times this, and since that thing is really just x squared minus 9, I might as well just leave it as x squared minus 9, and then this cancels with this, and I distribute that 5, I get 5x plus 15. And I'm going to move everything to the left side, so I get x squared. Let's see, these two make 21. So it's minus 5x, and then 21 minus 15 is plus 6. So I get x minus 2, x minus 3. So my two answers are x equals 2 and 3. So you think that this is the right answer, but it's actually not the right answer. And the reason it's not the right answer, and it's the reason you should have eliminated this choice and this choice immediately, was because if you put a 3 in here, it, it crashes the denominator. It makes the denominator, or it makes that fraction undefined. Because you can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. But what you really should have done is this. What you really should have done is this. You should have taken 2, stow it into x, hit enter, and then just type this in. Control it doesn't take that long. It takes a lot less time than what you just did, and there's almost no chance of making a mistake. X squared minus 9 plus 1, and hit Enter, negative 5. And then you do Control Division, 5 over X minus 3, and hit enter. Ooh, negative 5 equals negative 5. Now, if you try to do that same thing with 3, 3 control var x, and you hit enter, and although it works, if I come up here with my first equation, which is this one, and I retype it, and I hit enter, it says undefined, because it is. So the answer is 2. Here's my answer. 
Choice two. All right, kids. Whew. Wow. I hope they're not asking for average rate of change. That's pretty tough. Oh, they're asking for range. Seriously. Domain X values. How much to the right? How much to the left? Range Y values. How much up? How much down? Well, let's see. Somewhere around there is the lowest part. And somewhere around there is the upper part. So somewhere around 2.4 up and one or a little less than one down. And we're definitely talking about that Y values. There it is. Finished. Wow, that was a tough question. Sweating this one out, kids. View, page width. All right, so we, what we have to do is this is G of X is here, right? So what we're going to replace is we're going to say, okay, what is F of G of X? What is G of X? G of X is X plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to take this and put it into the F function. Of, the F function says take 2 times whatever's in there, x plus 5, and square it, minus 3 times x plus 5, and then add 1. So this is the hard part right here. So let's think about what this is. x plus 5 times x plus 5. Would you all agree with me that is uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25? I hope you would. Thank you. And we're going to describe it. We're going to multiply by 2. So don't distribute 2. I get 2x squared plus, remember we're going to multiply this by 2 now, right? Because it's got that 2 out front. Plus 20x plus 50. And then we're going to distribute this minus 3. So minus 3x minus 15 plus 1. And we're almost done. 2x squared. How many of them have 2x squared? All of them. This is probably where you're going to earn your money. 20x minus 3x is plus 17x. Oops, gone. And then 50 minus 15 is 36. 35 plus 1 is 36. Ka-chang! Moving on down. A jogger ran one-third of a mile on day one, two-thirds of a mile on day two, and one-third, one and one-third of a mile, two and two-thirds, and two, two and it's been every three more days. Which expression represents the total distance the jogger ran? So they're all from one to seven, so we don't have to worry about that. So we got to figure out which one. So this is one-third, then double it, two-thirds, and then... One and one third, that's four thirds. And then two and two thirds, that's eight thirds. You notice we're just doubling these things. So we gotta find something that's gonna be multiplying two times whatever the one was before. It's probably like choice, I don't even know. I don't even know. So what we're gonna do is this. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to show you a couple different ways. I'm trying to think of how I want to show you this. So let me show you a couple different ways. Let's just start with number one. And let's see what's going on. So we got one third times two to the D minus one. Well, the first D is one. So one minus one, that would be zero. So that would be one third. Then I got one third times two to the two minus one. Well, that just gives me one-third times two, which is two-thirds. So, so far, so good. And then one-third times two to the three minus one, and that's one-third times two squared. Two squared is four, so that gives me four-thirds. Now, four-thirds is really a three-thirds, which is one, and a one-third which is one and one-third. 
So this turns out to be the right answer. Let me show you another way to do this one. This turns out to be the right answer. Let me show you another way to do this problem. Do you see this part right here? Now my first answer, my first thing was one third, right? So I think, I think we can just do this. Uh, do control division one over three, enter. Just put that in. And then all they're doing is multiplying by two every time. So hit times two. Times two. Times two. Times two. Times two. And that's what these are. That's another way to do it. The answer is one. Hard problem if you don't understand fractions. And a lot of you don't. All right, so this one's an easy one. But this one says ding, 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 ding. Go look at your formula sheet. It's right here, kids. Cosine of A minus B is cosine, cosine, plus, sine, sine. So we go back. And of course, we have to go back into this because they didn't realize. Oh, they came back. They want to stay where they were. Dummies. So it is the cosine of X, cosine of Y, plus the sine of X, sine of Y. Got to look at your formula sheet. All right. Well, it says the cosine of X is equal to the cosine of y, which is equal to b. So this is b times b, or b squared plus, probably done, there it is, there's my answer, because this is a, and this is a, and this is a squared. Done. A school math team consists of three juniors, five seniors. How many different groups can be formed that consist of one junior and two seniors? So I need one junior and two seniors. Well, the only way to pick one junior, and it doesn't matter how I pick them, I just want one of them, but it doesn't matter how I pick them, since there are three of them, it is three choose one of them times, because and means time, and we have five seniors, so it's five C two. I right, just come over to your calculator, you're gonna say, okay, menu. Five, three, probability, combinations. And we're going to do three, comma, one. Oh, that would be three. So, three. And I go back to my calculator, and I go menu five, three, five, comma, two. I believe it was five, comma, two, and that's ten times ten. Thirty. Done. <coughs> 23, for which value of the k the roots would be real and rational numbers? Anytime they start talking about rational, real, irrational, imaginary, they're talking about the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So, and if I want it to be real, it has to be greater than or equal to zero in order for it to be real. In order for it to be rational, it has to be a perfect square. So we're just gonna type these in. B squared is not gonna change, that's just 25 minus four times two times, well, let's try one. So this would be 25 minus eight, which is in fact 17. It would make it real, but if I take the square root of 17, that would be irrational. So now we're going to do 25 minus 8 times, because this is just 8, times the next one, which is negative 5. Well, that would make positive 40, which would equal 465. That's real, but irrational again. Let's try 0. 25 minus 8 times times zero. That would be 25. Ooh, that looks pretty good. That looks like it might be my answer. Let's just check that last one, though. Maybe I screwed up. 25 minus 8 times 4. That would be 32. That would be negative something. 32. Negative 7. Nope, that would be imaginary. There it is. There's my answer. Zero. Zero is my answer. Going to page 8. We're almost done, kids. Page with. 
a cliff diver on a Caribbean island jumps from a height of 105 feet with an initial upward velocity of 5 feet per second and an equation that models his height above the water and the feet per second his elapsed time is this. How many seconds to the nearest hundredth does it take the diver to fall 45 feet to a starting point? What? How many seconds to the nearest hundredth does it take the diver to fall 45 feet below his starting point? Ah, that you got to think about. Ooh, this was a tough problem. This was kind of a difficult problem. Where the hell is my most? There it is. So here's my equation right here. So let's draw us a picture. How about we draw a purple cliff? We and I'll draw me a good stick figure, dude. Dude, I gotta jump off this cliff. We now this whole crap here with uh. An initial upward velocity of five feet per second, blah, 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 blah. Okay. That just means this crazy fool jumped up a little bit so they can get out here and come crashing. Well, we're hoping there's some water down here. Probably should do this in blue. We'll do it in like some light blue. Hopefully there's not any sharks down here. Got any sharks? I'm a terrible drawer, but... <laughs> Can you tell why I went into math? So anyway, here's the trick to this whole thing. We want to fall... Let me show you where the trick is. We want to fall 45 feet below his starting point. Well, his starting point was 105 feet in the air. So this was 105 feet. If I want to start, if I want to fall 45 feet below there, so I'm going to subtract off 45. Doesn't that mean I still have 60 feet left? So I want to figure out when this equation equals 60. So the whole thing was minus 16 t squared. That whole setup was to figure out if you could figure out that you wanted this to be at 60. Uh, I don't like negative t squared, so um, we'll just go 0 equals um, well, well, I think right now I can just stop. I don't have to do all this crazy amount of work. I'm just going to plug in these numbers and see which one gives me 60 feet. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 1.45 and stow it into X. And I'm going to type in negative 16X squared. I know they use T. It doesn't matter. Plus 5X plus 105. And then I'm going to take 1.84 and stow it into X. And then hit enter. Oh, there it is. Done. Bodied. Finished. But the drawing was pretty cool. How many 12 lemmer combinations for trigonometry? So we will start with the fact that we have 12 different possibilities. That is also 12p12, 12 12p12, 12, 12 12. so it could be that one as well. And we're going to divide by repeated letters. So I got a 2 factorial, and I have a 2 for that, so that's a 2 factorial. And then 2r's, so that's a 2 factorial. And then I've got a g. Oh, two O's. Two O's, that's two factorial. Oh, wow, I can see why kids miss this one. Well, the trick to the matter is, can you figure out what this is? This is really two times two times two, which is eight. And 12 factorial is the same as 12P12. They're the same thing. They are equivalent, so that's why that's the answer. All right, kids, that's about it. 
What? We just have to figure out what log y. Oh my goodness. So log y is equal to log of 2x cubed. Okay, that's the right answer. Damn. Now, I am going to tell you right now, most of our kids pick this. It is not the correct answer. Most of the kids thought they were very slick and smart and realized that that three goes in front there. It does not. Let me read this to you in a different way. And remember, you're taking a trig final, not a fourth grade final, right? This is log of two times x cubed, two times x cubed. Well, when you have multiplication, when you're working with logarithms, you remember that turns into addition. So this is really the log of 2 plus the log of x cubed. Well, what do I do with that 3? Now, now it goes here, and that's why it is choice 4. Last problem. Which statement regarding inverses is true? Well, if you remember correctly, Oh, man. Wow, this, well, okay, so this was a zinger, I guess, on this question. So we're either going to deal with sine. Or cosine. The domain of sine inverse is from 0 to 2 pi. Not if it's going to be a function. If it's going to be a function, remember what we want to do is eliminate or, or restrict it so that we'll pass the vertical and horizontal line test. And if you remember correctly, this fails the vertical line test, right? I don't know why I'm doing it that way. So it, I mean, excuse me, it passes the vertical line test, but it fails the horizontal line test. I knew I'd get rid of all that. So. What we want to do is restrict the domain of this to just from here to here. So that's from, so if the domain of this function, the domain is from negative pi to positive pi, uh, excuse me. It's at its lowest point. This is from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. If the domain of this is going to be restricted from negative positive over 2 to pi over 2, then for the sine, the range, because remember, these flip-flop when you're dealing with inverses. Inverses, when you have inverses, the domain of one is the range of the other. So you take them, you take inverses, you switch the domain and range. So the domain, if the domain of the original has to be restricted to this area, this part, then the range would have to be that same thing from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if I'm dealing with sine, that would be what that would have to be. So that's not true. So now let's talk about, I should have put this up anyway, let's talk about cosine. So the cosine of this function is, here's the cosine function. So in order for this to be a function, we need to restrict the domain from 0 to pi. So the domain of this one is from 0 to pi. That's the domain. And if we're talking about inverses, though, the inverse then, the range would be from 0 to pi. They just switch. So the inverse would be this. And the range of cosine inverse is 0 to pi. And there's the answer. So easy test until the last couple of problems, and then they decided they had a couple zingers on there. Uh, I guarantee most kids missed most of those questions. How'd you do? I don't know. Hey, guys, come on. Seriously, keep working hard. Proud of you guys for coming here. and Proud of you guys for working hard. Um, if you get 100 on that regions, please give me a call. No, don't give me a call. I don't want to talk to you. Text me. No, don't text me. Email me, kenkraus at gmail.com. K-E-N-K-R-A-U-S-E at gmail.com. Give me your name. Give me who you are. I'm going to put you on my wall of fame. And uh, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, keep working hard. Summer's right around the corner, kids. 
and then you can have fun. Bye!